Hello, and welcome to the Consistent Profits Podcast, brought to you by Inside Out Trading and Brian McAvoy, where the focus is on consistency, because when you have the consistent part down, profits become easy. Hello, everyone. This is Brian McAvoy with a new episode of the Consistent Profits Podcast. I'm very excited today to be interviewing Jerry Allison of Traders Accounting. Jerry, thanks for being on the podcast here today. I am very happy to be here, Brian. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm jazzed to have you here. Uh, I mean, Jerry, and so everybody knows, Jerry is uh, he's an accountant, but he's also a consultant, uh, a mentor. He's got a lot of years in uh, the accounting field, business field in general. And so today we're going to be talking about you know some of the business considerations that are very applicable for traders. But pay attention. I know this might you know at first sound oh you know boring and dry accounting, but no, <laughs> this means money for you. And Absolutely. A liability so that you can, you know, you can sleep well at night knowing that you don't have, you know, some outstanding, uh, you know, IRS liability that's going to come back to bite you later. You can sleep well knowing that you're OK and educating yourself is the first step. And so that's why I was thrilled to have Jerry come on here, because, uh, you know, as a trader, you actually are in business for yourself. And so to know these things and how to you know, step into it and do things properly in your trading, that's huge. And Jerry's the perfect guy to have on to discuss it. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into it. And uh, yeah, again, Jerry, thanks for being here, man. This is, this is awesome. You're very welcome. And uh, I want to talk to everybody today about why it's necessary to think about uh, uh, thinking in terms of a business. Um, certainly, if you're a trader, uh, you have the option of just going out there and investing your money with a broker and trying to make some money. But once you start wanting to deduct expenses and once you start wanting to optimize uh, your tax picture, that's when you start running into problems uh, because there's a lot of traps uh, that the IRS has laid out. Um, matter of fact, we'll, we want to talk about, first thing we want to talk about is probably trader tax status. It's probably the, the number one thing that people, uh, that traders start to look at and see that they want to actually get into. Um, trader tax status is a, is a choice, really, with the IRS. It's not, uh, it's not something you have to file for with the IRS. They don't need a piece of paper from you. They, you just actually do it on your tax return. But you've got to meet the criteria for it. And what happens then is you are allowed to deduct your expenses on your tax return. And it's always been my contention that traders have a lot more expenses than what they realize. Um, I, I talk to clients all the time or, or consulting clients and they say, well, I don't have that many expenses. And I start chuckling inside my head a little bit and I'm thinking you have more than what you think you do. Um, just to, to name a few, you've got uh, data feeds. I mean, a lot of serious traders have data feeds or they have subscriptions to software. Uh, those are two big ones. Uh, or they um, subscribe to some service. It's a charting service or something uh, where they're spending a lot of money to do this. Uh, even a home office deduction can save uh, money. Um, yeah. So there's some issues there. Sure. So Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, well... No, and I'm glad you're bringing all this up because as far as, yeah, the trader tax status, well, just like I said, just the, the it, 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 you know, a lot of people cringe when they hear the word formality. Mm -hmm. um, when I first, uh, you know, got in the working world uh, back in my late teens, I, I very quickly learned to appreciate certain formalities in business. Mm -hmm. And, and as, I, as I, you know, learned uh, more and more about business, just in the different jobs that I was working, going through school and stuff. I totally really started appreciating some of the formalities because they mean so much from, first of all, running a good business yes, and, and being successful and being able to sustain success when you achieve it. But also, yeah, money wise it, it, and, and tax wise. I mean, it just in so many regards, some of these formalities, they seem like a pain in the butt, but they're mm -hmm. huge and they, they've been established for a reason. They've, they're good Absolutely. practices that actually benefit you if you'll pay attention. And so, yeah, like, talking about like uh, now, uh, with uh, trader tax status, one, one quick question, uh, yeah. kind of even uh, before we jump into that, because um, you were saying, you know, yeah, you can uh, start, you know, you can just take your money and start trading. Um, 
is it really important for traders to differentiate the, the entity through which they're trading and setting up a business? Or is it really does, is it almost inconsequential in trading as a sole proprietor? Is that OK? And we're going to come back to a little more aspects of this. But just in general, what are your thoughts on just the entity formation to start with and set, actually setting it up as a business? Yeah, entity formation is actually very critical. Um, and the reasons for it actually go back to, <laughs> it sounds like I'm getting the cart before the horse, but it goes back to deducting expenses on your tax return. Mm -hmm. um, the scenario is when you start deducting expenses on your tax return, your personal tax return, that's when the IRS starts perking up. And that's when they start taking notice because you'd have to do it on a Schedule C. And Schedule C's are notorious for being audited. Every audit I've ever been involved in, except for one, has centered around a Schedule C. So um, it, you do raise the audit risk. So what we try to get our clients to do is move it off into an entity. Now, you may be thinking, okay, well, I can form an LLC uh, or you know, partnership or whatever. There are certain things that work and don't really work for traders. Um, one thing that does not work for a trader is a single member LLC. And you may say, well, it's a, an LLC. I can take deductions, right? Well, a single member LLC gives you asset protection. That's one plus, mm -hmm. but it puts right puts everything right back on that Schedule C again. It doesn't really do anything as far as getting away from IRS scrutiny. Oh. And it doesn't open up any deductions for you. Um, matter of fact, the Schedule C, whether you just invest as a, a an individual trader or through a single member LLC, there are huge limitations on the home office deduction. Uh, you can't take it fully. And so what we try to do is get the... Uh, the trading business, if you will, and again, we come back to that word business, get it off the personal tax return. We don't want it there. And so that narrows things down really to partnerships, S corporations, and C corporations. Mm -hmm. um, those are the three. Right. Um, now, what we do is we recommend to our clients that you form an LLC first and then elect to be one of those things. What is nice about LLCs is the, the individuals, the owners can change how the LLC is going to be taxed. Uh, for example, uh, husband and wife go into business trading and maybe one of them doesn't actually do any trading. It doesn't matter. They mm -hmm. form a partnership, uh, an LLC partnership for trading. And this is one of the routes that we actually advise our clients is that they start trading, it's off, their personal return, it's it's through a partnership return, but it's a pass-through entity. Everything still passes back through to their personal return, but it does it in a cleaner way. It goes on the Schedule E rather than Schedule C. So there's less audit risk that way. You get rid of the IRS scrutiny and you pick up that home office deduction without any restrictions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few other things that happen there. Um, now, let me get back to what I was saying. Later on, let's suppose they're doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. We can file an election with the IRS to be treated as an S corporation. We can change how the LLC is being taxed. And so a few years down the road, it's possible to change to a C corporation or it's possible to change back to a partnership. Um, and one of the reasons I like that flexibility, because if tax laws change and there becomes an entity that's a little bit more favorable mm -hmm. for taxation, we can file an election to change the LLC to that form. And it's really nice. That's cool. All right. Okay. Um, well, and for for the listeners who have never never run their own business and if the term schedule c it is something you're not familiar with anytime that you're like when you're doing your own personal taxes a schedule c is the the extra form in addition to your you know your w2 and 1040 that's for you personally the schedule c is where you would have all your business related um uh, you know income and expenses um right as like a sole proprietor, like if you're just going to, you know, run a, you know, say you're going to make, you know, wood, woodcraft stuff out of your garage and sell them or whatever. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, what he's talking about, the Schedule C's, that's the IRS form that goes with a business that's attached to you personally. And, but different entities have the different forms and and tax paths, so to speak, with the IRS. Like you're saying, with the Schedule E would be for partnerships. 
And then corporations, of course, have their own forms. So, but yeah, how things are treated by the IRS, it, it, yeah, the path that you choose can really affect how you're treated later. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And, and trying to get rid of IRS scrutiny is kind of a major thing. I mean, it's not the thing on, on most people mind, most people's minds. It, most people want to save on taxes, and that's understandable. Sure. Um, matter of fact, that's the first step in business 101, really, is not only be, being concerned with income coming in, but make sure it's not going out. Uh, and taxes are one critical way of doing that. So uh, that's actually the first step there um, in understanding this and being concerned about uh, making sure that your your trading business is solid and on the right foot. True, true. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, for those for those of you that are expense conscious, um, you know, you might be worried about, you know, a, a $20 a month subscription to something that it will actually add a lot of value to your business. You know, you're going to sweat over $20 a month, but not pay attention to your taxes. Your taxes can be a much larger expense and you got much better opportunity to save money if you pay attention to it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you're already it's, a lot of time on. And it's very possible. And I see it uh, frequently that you could make, let's say a couple thousand dollars in the market and you're, you're happy over that. That's great. And you end up paying taxes over it. But if you got to deduct your expenses and you find out there's $3,000 of expenses there, now you're in the whole $1,000, but you're not getting any benefit of it if you don't get to deduct those expenses. True. Yeah, then you have to pay taxes on top of the, the $3,000 expenses. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things we try to avoid uh, with our clients. We try to really minimize their tax burden and put them into a place where uh, they're paying the least amount of taxes, but they're making as much as they can in the market. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing about it is, just like any game, if you're going to be professional about it, you need to know the rules. And that's, that's right. That's where working with somebody like Jerry and Traders Accounting where they know not not only accounting in general, but also specifically for traders, it can be they, they can be a, a tremendously valuable resource. And we're going to circle back to uh, you know uh, working with them here in just a little bit, um, but yeah, you definitely want to pay attention um, you know to your taxes, your your entity. I mean, heck, if nothing else, just the frustration you know of dealing with the accounting. If you don't have your you know your your entity and your accounting and all that kind of stuff, if you haven't set your your infrastructure for your business up properly uh, from the start, and then you try to do it later or you you know you're fumbling through it, um, it can be really stressful and aggravating and very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. So again, attending to this formality as soon as possible or as early as possible in your trading career, it can really save you a lot of grief, a lot of stress, make things you know more, much more smooth for you and also greatly affect your bottom line. So, yep. um, okay, so so we talked a little bit about uh, the entities and you were saying uh, you'd like to start with a Schedule C and, and but then also actually set up as a partnership um, because it offers the flexibility. So um, now kind of circling back to where we started because I know I ran us off a little different direction. Okay, so now let's let's bring it back to tax status mm -hmm. or uh, trader, trader, uh, trader status. As far as taxation and, and the considerations go with that, and, and how to how to how to step into that, right? The trader tax status, as I mentioned a little bit ago, is a choice, um, but there are some criteria that have to be met, and it can be met on individual level as well as a business level. Um, now, the IRS, by the way, if you for those of you who are interested in reading what the IRS has to say, uh, publication five fifty. Um, is something that you want to get from the IRS. And you can go to the IRS website, type it in the search bar, and you could download it in PDF format. Um, it, it deals with all types of investing. So that is the kind of our go-to. I've got a copy of it on my desktop. And so it's, it's a great reference. But anyway, Publication 550, when it defines the criteria for trader tax status, it does it very vaguely. And I think... The IRS does this intentionally, so that it gives their examiners a lot of flexibility to do to uh, <laughs> determine things. Let's put it that way. Um, however, what we do manage to do is we go back to court cases where actually people have decided to say, "Okay, I don't like what the examiner's saying. Let's take it to court." And there are three criteria that have come out of court cases that. If you meet these three criteria, then you can de deduct expenses on your personal tax return. 
Okay. Uh, the first one is there have to be 720 or more trades per year. So we know that's come out of a court case. Some people that's easy to do. Some people that's rather difficult to do. It depends upon trading. So well, 720, yeah, go ahead. Well, and the 720, that's individual transactions. So like a round turn in and out trade counts too. Yes, that is correct. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and if it's broken up into lots, like for example, you want to buy 100 shares of stock and it's broken up into three lots, that's three separate trades right there. Yeah. So it's not that difficult really to get to uh, 720 trades a year. Uh, the second criteria is you should be trading in at least 75% of the trading days per year. Um, now, if you do the math on that, that's about 188, 189 days out of the year that uh, you're trading. Now, I'm going to talk about those two. Why are they so stringent? One of the things that does come out of the general information in publication 550 is the IRS wants you treating this like a business. Here we go back to that term business again. Um, anytime you start dealing with the tax code and trading, if you don't, if you're not going to treat it like a business, then IRS is not going to work with you at all. And so if you owned a business, let's say uh, uh, an auto repair shop, uh, you're not going to take huge amounts of time. You're going to be there and you're going to be working that job and you're going to be doing all, all this stuff. Well, the same, they want the same standard for trading. They want you to be there at least three quarters of the trading days per year and also be making all these trades. And both of those can be uh, uh, proven just by handing an IRS examiner your, your monthly statements because all the trades are right there. You can say, count them up, buddy, and or, or look at the number of days. You know, it's right there. The third criteria is not quite as clear cut. Uh, the third criteria that you need to meet is there should be 500 hours of trading, research, and education during the year. Really? Um, again, they want to show that you are treating this seriously. Um, also, they they have a bias against automation, you know, bots and AI and stuff like that, because now a lot of traders are getting into these programmatic uh, trading systems where they don't have to do anything. Right. And the IRS is not going to allow that. Um, and just say, okay, well, you you got a computer doing all your work for you, so you can deduct your expenses. They're not going to allow that. So they want you putting in the work. And so what we recommend to our clients is basically keep a log of what you're doing. Um, certainly, if you're you're sitting there at six a.m. or whatever time you start pre market, and you know, write the time down. And just you can use an Excel spreadsheet. You can use a database. You can even use paper and pencil. It's just as long as you keep it. Um, what the time is and what you're doing. Anytime you watch even a YouTube video about trading or one of your podcasts, you know, write the time down and, you know, here's the time I watch this thing. And all that collectively adds up. Education, if you go and you educate yourself at a, a training session or you go to like the money show in Las Vegas, all of that is time that can be added into this. So it's really not that difficult to do. You just got to be able to prove it if the IRS ever has a problem. Yeah. Now you said it's it's how many hours per year? 500 hours. Huh. Okay. So break it out. You're working, you know, fit standard 50 week year. That's 10 hours a week. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's reasonable. You just need to be able to demonstrate it. Exactly. And so that particularly, if you're going to be deducting your expenses on the Schedule C of your tax return. I'm going to keep going back to that because it's really important. Um, if, as long as you're going to be doing this as an individual and not as an entity, you have to maintain those criteria. And don't even think about using a bot or AI. You really have to maintain those criteria in order to deduct those expenses. Well, just for clarification. So even if I am using some sort of computer-aided whatever, mm -hmm whether it's a bot or, you know, the regular, you know, running algorithms or, you know, uh, expert advisors or, uh, or alerts, so long as my personal involvement still meets the 500 hour requirement, we're good. So yeah, if I'm there watching the charts, I'm spending time managing the business, all my time yeah. engaged in the business, even if I have some automation, 
as long as I'm personally involved that much, then then I'm okay. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's starting to walk on a thin line there, but I think you're going to be correct as long as you can show you've got personal uh, engagement in the trading and they're actually you're actually executing. Now, certainly you've got to use some technology for, you know, the research and all that. I mean, doing that by paper and pencil anymore is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> you just can't do it. But um, but when you start talking about having the, the programs actually make the trades for you, um, you know, let's say you're I don't know, doing Tesla. A lot of people like Tesla for whatever reason. Um, and, and, and you program a computer just to buy and sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and you walk away from it and you're right. not engaged. That's when they're going to have a problem with this. Got it. Okay. Um, now we now just to kind of follow that up a little bit. We do advise that if you do have programmatic trading, any type of AI or some type of mechanism that's trading for you, get it off into an entity off your personal tax return because the IRS tends to leave that alone even more. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Good advice. Huh? So, all right. So our three, three criteria, the three, three the three big ones mm -hmm. you said was uh, volume number of trades per year. Correct. Um, our frequency um, need to be trading a, a, like at least 75% of the time or, mm -hmm. yeah. and the hours of our active engagement in the business. Okay. Right. Okay. So those are the big three. Now there are, there are other considerations, but those are the main ones. Those are the big ones. And, and we really don't worry about the other ones so much because if you can get past those, the other ones tend to fall into place. So, well, does well, it make any difference regarding how long you're in trades, like being a day trader versus a swing trader? Like, no, because we've had, well, no. Okay. And, and I, I'm going to qualify this because usually they, they, the IRS sets up a 30 day minimum, you know, some type of a standard about you're, you're in short term for 30 days or less. Okay. So usually a lot of swing trading can be done in 30 days. Uh, um, now, usually swing traders, th those are the ones that don't have as many trades. So they're the ones that have to watch out for that, uh, that, that volume cap there, okay. but um, 30 days, but, we also have clients, you also have situations where some people are, they have long-term holdings. Uh, for example, again, I'm going to use Tesla just for sake of it. They get, you know, thousand shares of Tesla stock, and then they will rapidly sell options on that. Right. And they still qualify. They've got the long-term holding, but at the same time, they, they qualify because they're just, they're rapidly trading the options. Gotcha. Okay. Huh. Now, as far as the the, the, the trader status, um, that's really just kind of a lens. I mean, so that we can put it in perspective and everybody can get a handle on it. You said because it's it's not really something that you, you know, form you have to fill out for and mm -hmm. qualify for. It's just something that you do. Mm -hmm. um, where does that come into play then regarding our, our taxation? And is it is it primarily if we're just dealing with the Schedule C? If we got off the Schedule C, is the trader tax status really even that big of a deal? Is it primarily focusing on being able to deduct things or, you know, claim deductions? Is that where the, the trader tax status primarily comes in? Or does it also affect our tax rate? Um, like, you know, long-term versus short-term gains, that kind of a consideration as far as the tax rate. Right. Uh, the primary concern is just being able to take the deductions. Um, it, and it, indirectly, it will affect your tax rate because it could lower you into a lower tax bracket. Um but well, it does not change the taxation of the gains uh, that you have at all, uh, long term versus short term. That's all going to be done at the standard uh, individual tax rates in that case. Okay. Um, now you you kind of nudged into a very gray area here that I do want to kind of briefly highlight. Okay. Trader tax status. When you go read about the court cases, you read. Uh, publication 550 and all that stuff, everything that they cite there is referring to individual traders, people who are doing it on their personal tax return. There is absolutely no guidance for entities whatsoever huh. as of this point. Huh. And so you've got two points of view that have arisen. One point of view is uh, the risk averse view because, well, we don't have any guidance. So you still need to maintain those standards, even if you are in an, an LLC partnership. Okay. 
And the other point of view is <clears throat> those those standards are for individuals because the IRS really doesn't want you just deducting anything on a Schedule C. But when you get off into an, uh, an LLC a partnership, you have taken the effort to form that business. Businesses have expenses and therefore should be allowed regardless of the amount of trades that you make. And so it depends on where, where you fall down on that that view. Uh, and so you have to kind of determine whether you're risk averse or not and whether you want to take the chance. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, one other, well, another consideration here, and really this is kind of stepping all the way back is, um, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be doing your trading and setting up this financial activity as part of your life, um, and you're just going to do it as an individual, you go to the broker, you're signing papers in your name, your everything is in your name and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the tax considerations, it, it can get kind of challenging because yes, you're doing it strictly as a sole proprietor as an, as, and, and as an individual. Um, the benefits of being able to do things as a business, like we've been talking about, is if you're treating it truly as a business, you file, you know, with your secretary of state and you establish a business entity that has its own name, has its own tax number, has its own bank accounts, and every the, all the relationships that you engage in with your trading are done through that entity. That's how you're treating it properly as a business. And now, yes, businesses. Well, here, here's here's one of the big reasons you want to do this. Mm -hmm. Treat it like a business. And yes, you buy, you know, let's say you spend, you know, five grand on a really nice computer setup and everything for your trading business. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it as an individual, that's a personal expense. And you may, yeah. or may not be able to deduct it, even though you're doing it for your trading. Mm -hmm. If you do it properly as a business and you use it just for your business, it's not for your gaming and that kind of stuff. It is for your business. Mm -hmm. You buy it through the business account. Like I said, you're doing it as, as a business properly. You can deduct that expense off the right. income you make from that business, which is cool. Yes. And like you noted at the beginning here, Jerry. Yeah. When you actually start thinking about all the money that you, you wind up dropping on stuff, if you can take it as a tax deduction, it really adds up and can have a big swing for you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, but that's why I advise clients. I mean, particularly in an LLC, uh, like multi-member LLC, you can deduct these expenses. And a lot of times when I do webinars, I go through an example that shows him how you can get the government to pay through refunds for your LLC. Because we're talking about these deductions that you couldn't normally take as a person, you know, a $5,000 computer. I can guarantee you right there, just about with any state in the, in the country, that you deduct a $5,000 computer that you couldn't deduct personally. If you do that through an LLC, the refund you get for that will pay for the LLC fee each year and will pay for uh, the tax prep fee. That's the refund paying for that. So the government's essentially paying for your LLC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one instance that I like to use, and I mentioned a little bit ago, is that home office deduction, because that's a critical deduction. Oh, yeah. And you can you can deduct enough through that that you can't do on the personal side that, again, you'll get the refund that can pay for that LLC without any sweat. Yeah. Well, and with home office, the cool thing about it, um, again, anything that you're buying for the business that you put in that home office and that is dedicated space for your business. So you're doing it properly. Um, it, so it, first, first time I, I did went off, went through this whole exercise with home business years ago, I was thrilled because yeah, you can deduct square footage, uh, you know, the percentage square footage from your home. So a lot of your home expenses, you can take a percentage of those um, in certain circumstances. Uh, your utility bills, your insurance, a lot of the home related expenses now are business expenses because you're allocating that part of the home for your business. So yeah, a whole lot of stuff that would normally be straight out of pocket. Now it's a business expense. It's a deduction. And, and, and so, and, and you want, again, I'm not saying this, you know, to, to be cute and make a game of it, but the thing is you're going to be spending all this money. If you're going to be devoting part of your home for your trading business, you might as well gain the benefit of it. Go ahead and do exactly. it. Right attend to the formalities and then you, it really is a big benefit for you. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, yeah, the, the, the tax refund that you get because you've been able to deduct all these expenses. Yeah. Otherwise they would be straight out expenses and you're paying taxes on your full revenues and not your actual, what should be your taxable revenues. 
That's right. So this is, I mean, this is a cool aspect of accounting that I mean, it, <laughs> like, you know, a lot of times you count, you know, accounting to people and they're going to roll their eyes like, Oh yeah. Um, it's like, no, there's certain things about accounting that you can get fired up about because it Absolutely. has a big impact on your account balance. <laughs> yeah. What's really cool is when I, when I do a webinar, the host will come in after I get done with the webinar and say, Oh, that was going to be boring here. It was exciting because, you know, we were talking about ways to, to, to optimize the tax strategy, get money back from the government that you never knew was possible. And so the idea there is really beneficial to traders out there if they employ it right. Well, the flip side of it, and even better, again, running it truly as a business, mm -hmm. one of the things about uh, operating as a business and not as an individual where, you know, most people used to, you know, you got your job, you go work a few weeks, you know, you get the paycheck uh, after the fact, and they withhold, you know, money from your paycheck and all that kind of stuff with a business where you're bringing revenue in directly to you you file your taxes quarterly. And so you're paying your taxes quarterly. And yeah, so you're not having to, you know, wait until the end of the year necessarily to get that money mm -hmm. back. You get to keep it up front because you're doing your taxes as you go. So it's like, as you're, if you're managing your, your business properly, you're, you're putting, you're, 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 you know, there's less going out in the first place. Right. You're certainly more in control of what you can control can do oh, and instead of letting your employer control your life for you or whoever you are now in the driver's seat and you can make those estimated payments you know exactly what's going on and quite frankly uh there there's an adage that if if people knew what they were paying into the government we'd probably get tax reform right away um and, and as a business owner, you know what you're paying in there. It becomes an important part. You have to write that check manually and send it into the government or do it online. Oh. So it's, I think it's an important piece to this whole puzzle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, it, it, <laughs> this actually is pretty cool stuff. I, I, and because, yeah. um, I mean, of course, being an engineer, I've always been you know, kind of a numbers geek anyway, but this, this kind of stuff, it actually is really cool. Um, well, I'll tell you what, we've, we've covered a lot of ground and I would love to, uh, uh, it, it, there's, there's a lot more to the story here, right? And what I would, what I would really love to do if you're game for it, uh, mm -hmm. let's have you back, you know, come back on, we could talk more about the specific entities, uh, from a, you know, a tax standpoint, some of the, you know, some of the checklists as far as setting things up, mm -hmm. um, uh, legal considerations, uh, you know, oh, well, one, one question in general, sure. I mean, you, you, you've got your own, uh, you know, financial services firm. But you're you're one of the key players at uh, Traders Accounting, which is mm -hmm. an excellent firm. Been around for a lot of years. Uh, Raven runs it. Excellent person. Uh, very Chance. a very uh, first class operation you guys have there. I mean, I've, I've known Raven for a lot of years. Uh, very above board. Very straightforward. Uh, very helpful. Always taking good care of customers. Um, and you guys, you got the you know the accounting side, the the specialty in trading, so you know the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and you work with traders uh, all across the country, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, matter of fact, a few in Puerto Rico, too, I believe. In fact, I know I did a tax return for somebody in Puerto Rico um, this year. So, but yeah, we've got, we can set up entities and we do tax returns for anybody anywhere in the United States. So. Oh, oh, and this this is huge for anybody who's thinking, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I need to go ahead and set up an, an, an entity, you know, an entity and get my business set up. This is really important. This was a, a, this was a costly lesson for me back in my early days when I didn't know anything. When you're wanting to set up your business, yes, there are certain legal things that you need to do. You know, mm -hmm. like the, the filing with the you know the the Secretary of State where you live. You know, filing the articles of organization or whatever, and, and the, the various filings to set up your business. Don't go to a lawyer. <laughs> Go to an accountant. <laughs> the accountant understands the legal side and the accounting side. The lawyer, right. the lawyer only understands the legal part of it. Exactly. The accountant, they can help you attend to all the legalities and get your accounting set up and, and advise you on your taxes and the best way to approach it tax wise. And the, the other reason you want to work with an accountant instead of, and, and again, instead of just doing this on your own, working through a lawyer is there are different considerations depending on your circumstances, as far as what entity you set up. Um, and, you know, like the activity, just like if you're investing in real estate, this one will be a little more relatable for other people. Just like with real estate, there's not one entity that's necessarily the best for everybody. 
a lot of it depends on your activity. Absolutely. With real estate, you know, if you're looking to buy properties and you're looking to buy and hold them and rent them out and sell them later, if you're looking to flip them or whatever, or, you know, Airbnb, depending on what you're doing and your overall tax, uh, you know, personal tax situation, one entity may be better than another. Right. And so that's why you want to have the conversation with somebody like Jerry or one of the other accountants over at Traders Accounting. Discuss your situation. Okay, what's the best entity for me to set up to start with? And then what all you know is involved in getting that set up? Right. Absolutely. And you mentioned a little bit ago, don't go to a, an attorney because they just understand the legal side of this. And and to a point that's correct. And you also have to be careful with the accountant you go to because they have to understand trading as well. And I'm going to use the word most. I don't know if it's over 50%, but I suspect it's over 50% of accountants really don't understand trading and how that impacts a tax return. And, and, you know, the different ramifications of that. So um, one of the bad parts of my job, and I hate to say there's a bad part, but there is, it's cleaning up the messes that other people make, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, and I hate to see it because it, it costs these clients tremendous amounts of money because they thought they had everything set up right. And I said, okay, you got to go back and you got to redo this now. Or you got to dissolve the LLC you set up and set it up again. And so it gets really, it's, it's one of the bad parts of my job is having to do all that. Well, it's good that you, it's good that you do that though. Because you know, even if something doesn't get started right, if you can come in and help them get it squared away, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a good step in the right direction. And, and I, honestly, it, 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 if you're trading, which you would be if you're listening to this podcast, and, and you don't already have somebody that you're like super locked into as far as your accounting, talk to traders accounting. Like I said, they're a good outfit. They understand mm -hmm. the accounting laws. They, they're required, of course, to stay on top of the tax laws, but they definitely understand it from the trader's perspective. Been, they've been at this for a couple of decades. They live the trader in the trader's yeah. world. And so they, as far as your, you know, your, your, the, the trading aspect of your, you know, financial situation, even if they're not going to, not going to take care of everything, Seek them out as far as your trading business and what you're doing with your trading. Um, right. Now, um, so, uh, and, and the best way to uh, connect with you uh, as far as Traders Accounting is tradersaccounting.com, correct? That's correct. And yes. link down below. Um, you guys have got some uh, different resources there. Uh, in Because uh, I, I know you've got like webinars and some other workshops, a couple of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just some uh, general information. Um as far as, uh, you know, coming on board with you guys, what, what's, what's that process like? If like for somebody that's listening, they're saying, yeah, you know, I, I need to, you know, I need to do, attend to this. Should they just like, you know, go to the website and schedule a call or what, how's this work? Uh, they can go to the website and schedule a call, or they can just call the number that's on the website and talk to whoever answers the phone and, they'll get set up of either if you just need consulting, they'll set you up with an appointment for consulting, or if you want your tax return done, they'll set that up or, you know, set the entities up. I mean, just, just let them know exactly what you want and we can get that ball rolling uh, immediately. Cool. Um, but, uh, well, and just to kind of help set expectations as far as if, if they are basically starting from scratch, they, they do want the entity set up and, you know, help with, uh, you know, getting the accounts and you know, attending the formalities generally speaking, I understand it's a range a little different from state to state, but generally speaking, how long does that process take as far as just getting the initial setup work done as far as, you know, like, you know, that, well, cause we also do need to include, uh, I would think as part of the service you can, you can help see, you can uh, help people set up as far as their own accounting software that they use at home, uh, mm -hmm. for tracking their or running their business. Um, uh, and so as, anyway, as far as the initial setup, about how long does that generally take, um, um, it depends upon whether the state is busy or not. The official time frame is two to four weeks. Uh, oh. Everything is done. However, I have seen lately that in a few states, it's getting done in days, not weeks. So, I mean, the moment it gets in there, he gets back out from the state and I'm having what's called a coaching call with them to, to talk to them, but you know, the last steps and getting things going, brokerage accounts and things like that going. So sometimes it can be done really quickly. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, wow. Well, I'll tell you what, that, again, I, I, I was thrilled to, you know, to uh, get you on the call today. I, I'm, I really totally appreciate you taking the time and, um, I, and I look forward to having you back on here now um, for future calls. Like I said, we can go a little deeper into some of these certain aspects. 
Uh, do you also, uh, you know, could you also speak to um, asset protection and structuring of, uh, you know, a, a person's uh, finances for asset protection and estate planning? Is that something that you guys also can help with? Um, we can speak about that in a very superficial way, but that is more something that you really, in this case, you want more of an attorney if you want uh, in-depth conversation about that. So um, uh, in that case, we can just mention things very superficially and uh, just kind of generally talk about it, such as like a revocable trust, irrevocable trust. But get, And also it's different based upon states as well. Um, they States have different types of, of entities and trusts and things like that. So uh, we can kind of give some general information on that. Okay. Well, yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind, you know, at some point being able to speak to that, because uh, as far as estate planning, uh, that, can be a, that can be a big deal. Um, and so uh, particularly from a tax uh, standpoint, I mean, yeah, if, I mean, if you are not tending to your, you know, your estate mm -hmm. and you've got a reasonable amount of wealth to pass on to your heirs, how you go about passing that on can have some serious ramifications uh, Absolutely. for your heirs and how long it takes and how much of a pain in the butt it is, uh -huh. and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that's a good consideration to keep in mind. And yeah, if we could talk about that, but for now, I mean, just, even just within, you know, setting up your, you know, your trading as a proper uh -huh. business and running it properly and good practices and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'd love to have you back on. We can get more in depth on that kind of stuff. So that'd be great because you mentioned a little bit ago, we are scratching the surface here. And I mean, I think we're scratching the scratch on the surface. So um, it's, it's, there's a lot more to this. So I hope nobody just goes and jumps out and does something and you really need more information on this. True. Oh, well, and at the same time, don't, don't feel that it's overwhelming. It's right. just an aspect of being a serious trader where you're actually maybe wanting to trade for a living or establish some good wealth to retire on or, you know, income for retirement mm -hmm. or whatever and trading it properly and getting things set up properly, educating mm -hmm. yourself so that now things run smoothly and everything's done properly. So you, you gain all the, the tax advantages, the, you know, whatever financial advantages, again, you know, looking toward the other aspects of having a you know financial asset right. um, and, you, and you're doing things right. And you're doing it in an educated manner so that you know that you're okay and you have that, that peace of mind, that security, exactly. you've got the good support here. That's so, right. Yeah, um, absolutely worthwhile. And, and especially, I mean, if this is something that where you're, you know, you're wanting to treat it, you know, with some significance and you have, you know, a significant amount of money uh, tied up into it or looking to build, you know, that, that significant amount of wealth, it only makes sense to treat it with proper respect and, and attention. Yes. So very much so. Jerry, again, this has been excellent, man. Any, any last fi final words of wisdom besides just don't run off and just start doing stuff? <laughs> um, actually, that, that would be it. Just make sure if you're going to do something, talk to somebody who knows what they're doing before doing it because it's so critical to get this set up at the get-go because the, uh, the concept here is to get it set up so you don't have to think about it later because as we know, trading uh, can be affected by emotions. And if you're worried about taxes, if you're worried about other things, if you don't set this up properly, your trading is going to suffer because of it. So, you know, get everything set up so you don't have to think about it and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, it, if you if you already have a personal accountant that you have a longstanding relationship with, you can have the conversation with them. Mm -hmm. But I, even, even if you do, I still would recommend that you give them a call over Traders Accounting, be, again, because they specialize in trading. And right. that your, you know, your, your, your local accountant might be great for what you've already been doing. Uh, maybe they're fine with, you know, your personal situation, you know, you being an employee, you got a different business, you got, you got real estate or whatever. Trading's a right. different piece. Mm -hmm. So give them a call at Traders Accounting. You'll be glad that you get, you did. Um, they're a good bunch. Um, and like I said, I've been working with them for years, a lot of years, uh, very high integrity group. Uh, they've been around for a while. They're well established. So they'll take good care of you. Um, and absolutely worthwhile that you do it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, excellent. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. And again, everybody, I, I applaud you for being here and, you know, taking the time to educate yourself and, you know, learn and develop as a trader and as a business owner and investor, which you are. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode of the Consistent Profits Podcast. Take care. Cheers. Thank you for joining us today on the Consistent Profits Podcast brought to you by Inside Out Trading. Make sure to swing by Inside Out Trading and pick up your copy of The Proven Formula for Consistent Monthly Profits. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to subscribe on your favorite channel, and we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers!